you often talk about getting off this planet. And I think you don't often talk about extraterrestrial life, intelligent life out there. Do you wonder about this kind of thing, about intelligent civilizations out there? I do, but I try to not wonder about it in a particular way. Um, in, in a certain sense, I do find that speculating about Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster and space aliens is kind of a recreation for when things aren't going very well. Uh, at least it gives us some meaning and purpose in our lives. So I worry about, you know, for example, the simulation hypothesis is taking over from religion. You can't quite believe enough to go to church or synagogue or the mosque on the weekend. So then you just take up an interest in, uh, in the simulation theory because that's something like what you do for your job coding. I do think that in some sense, the issue of aliens is a really interesting one, but has been spoiled by too much sort of recreational escapism. The key question that I find is, let's assume that it is possible to look out at the night sky and see all of these distant worlds and then go visit them. If that is possible, it's almost certainly possible through some uh, as yet un, uh, unknown or not accepted theory of physics beyond Einstein. And I mean, it doesn't have to be that way, but probably is. If that theory exists, there would be a, a percentage of the worlds that have life in sort of a Drake equation kind of a way that would have encountered the ability to escape uh, soon enough after unlocking the power of the atom at a minimum and whatever they have that is probably analogous to the cell uh, on that world. So assuming that life is a fairly generic thing that arises, uh, probably not carbon-based, probably doesn't have DNA, but that something that fits the pattern of uh, Darwinian theory, which is descent with variation, um, differential success. And thereby constantly improving and so on, that, that there, through time there'll be a trajectory where we'll, there'll be something increasingly complex and fascinating and beautiful like us humans, but much more that can also off-gas whatever entropy it creates to give an illusion that you're defeating uh, thermodynamics, right? So whatever whatever these things are, probably has an analog of the bilipid layer so that cells can get rid of the chaos on one side of the barrier and keep order on the other. Whatever these things are that create life, assuming that there is a theory to be found that allows that civilization to diversify, um, we would have to imagine that such a civilization might have taken an interest in its concept of the universe and have come here. They would come here. They would have a deep understanding of the physics of the universe sufficient to have arrived here. Well, there's two questions, whether they could arrive physically and whether their information could be sent here and whether they could gain information from us. It's possible that um, they would have a way of looking into our world without actually reaching it. I don't know. But yes, if, if my hope, which is that we can escape this world, is can be realized, if that's, if that's feasible, then you would have to imagine that the re reverse is true and that somebody else uh, should be here. First of all, I, I want to say this. My purpose when I come on to your show and I reframe the questions is not to challenge you. I can sit inside all of those. It's to give you better audio and video because I think we've been on a, an incredible roll. I really love what you do. And so I am trying to honor you by being as disagreeable about frame breaking as possible. I think some of your listeners don't understand that it's actually a sign of respect as opposed to some sort of a complex dynamic, which is I think you can play outside of some of the frames and that these are sort of offerings to get mm -hmm. the conversation started. So let me try to break that frame and give you something different. Beautiful. I, I think what's going on here is that um, I can prove effectively that we're not thinking about this in very deep terms. As soon as I say we've got to get off this planet, the number of people who assume that I'm talking about faster than light travel is very high. And faster than light travel assumes some sort of Einsteinian paradigm that then is broken mm -hmm. um, by some small adjustment. And I think that that's fascinating. It shows me that our failure to imagine what could be being said 
is profound. We don't have an idea um, of all of the difference, different ways in which we might be able to visit distant worlds. Um, all we think about is, okay, it must be, it must be Einsteinian space times, and then some means of exceeding the speed limit. And it's just, it's fascinating to me that we don't really have, uh, we, we've lost the ability to just realize we don't know the framework. Uh, 